Our scripture reading from this week comes from Hebrews 10, 10 to 14. And by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to week three of the Anticipation of the Promise. I'm so glad you decided to join me in this Advent midweek series. Last week we talked about the role of the prophet and how Jesus perfectly fulfilled that role. This week we're going to be talking about the role of the priest and how Jesus fulfilled that role. Jesus Christ was a priest, as they say, in the order of Melchizedek. That is to say he is a priest of God before priests were established and from the line of Aaron in Exodus. He fulfills that role of offering forgiveness of sins, intercession, and ultimately through sacrifice. Jesus stands as the priest before and after all other priests, even Melchizedek. He offered the perfect and holy sacrifice. Where others would come up short, he succeeded. So let's talk about the different, the different workings of a priest, the different things that a priest will do. That's Intercession, purification and sacrifice, and the forgiveness of sins. So intercession. Jesus has open communication with God the Father. Now this is a form of communication where priests would pray to God in, in the days before Jesus. But now he's created this line of open communication. He also taught us how to pray when he taught us the Lord's Prayer. And then now, at the ascension, he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Saying, God, please give these people another chance. These are my people. Let me save one more. Second, we also see the purification and the sacrifice of Christ's life. He is purified. He is anointed at the baptism, at his baptism. Which also introduces the Holy Trinity. We see God the Son being baptized. God the Father coming and saying, this is my Son with whom I'm well pleased. And the dove and the Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove. Uh, which hopefully that gives you a, a little bit of chills. The, the thought of that scene, uh, seeing the Holy Trinity. So we see this purification that happens in that baptism scene. We also see the necessity of sacrifice. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. This happened from the very beginning. From the time of the fall all the way through today. And it won't be completed until, until the last day when, when we are made perfect by God. Right? So there is a necessity for sacrifice. Sin happens and sin must be atoned for. And that's what a priest would offer. So in the days before Jesus, in the form of, of these perfect animals, they would find the best animal that they could possibly find. One without blemish who could provide a perfect sacrifice. But as we know, Jesus Christ provided the only perfect sacrifice that would end all other sacrifices by offering himself, by living a blameless life and then offering himself on the cross because he loved us that much. And then finally, Jesus offers the forgiveness of sins. Sin is always against God. And this is something that we have to understand. Sin is always against God. There are people who, who definitely fall victim to your sin. But sin is ultimately against God first and foremost. So when Jesus said your sins are forgiven to the paralytic... He was claiming that the sin was against him. And that's what made the Pharisees so upset when he did it. And that's also what makes him the perfect sacrifice. Is that he is God. So he can say 
your sins are forgiven. And not only that, what he did at the end in John 20, verses 21 to 23, he gives us the power to do that. He breathed on the disciples, giving them the Holy Spirit and said, if you forgive the sins of others, they are forgiven. If you withhold this forgiveness, then that forgiveness is withheld. And that is a heavy responsibility. And it's one that Jesus Christ gives us. And it also, so in doing this, in, in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, what we have is we, we are given this ability to speak to God the Father with Jesus Christ interceding on our behalf. We have this, this purification through, through his sacrifice. We are made whole once again. And then we have this, this forgiveness of sins that is not just ours, but this ability to forgive the sins of others. And if that's not news worth sharing, if that doesn't build up your anticipation as you consider the babe lying in a manger, then I don't know what does. Because this, this, this is the perfect priest, this perfect oneness with God. And I do want to read uh, this verse again, Hebrews 10, starting in verse 10. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. You are forgiven. You are being sanctified. As we end this week, I'd like to leave you with this prayer and blessing. O God, who makes us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And a blessing. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.